Okay, so this next question, 2013, question two. This one's a little bit trickier. Um, and it's going to, this one's also going to be calculus. And the best way that I would say for anyone who struggles with the calculus stuff to write this into your calculator because if this question pops up it's probably going to pop up as a free response question and the way that you do this integration is always the same all right so let's start get started uh first part's easy it's just fvd all right so uh, fa goes in this direction KV goes in that direction, FN goes up, and FG goes up. Now, I don't necessarily think that there these have to be actually um, drawn uh, proportional, though you should probably keep that in mind that FA most likely is bigger than KV, and FN and FG are the same. Uh, and you basically get, this was a good four points four points for each of these and you lost one point for every extra force that you put in so easiest four points ever All right. now this is where the problem starts to get a little bit trickier it's saying write but do not solve a differential equation for to determine the speed of the box as a function of time yada 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 so they're straight up telling us differential equation in particular when you see these two together, differential speed, what you want to remember is that instead of doing, you're basically going to start with F net equals MA, except you're going to rewrite this as M dV over dt. That's pretty much what you're going to do. And you're basically going to solve it as dV over dt equals blank. All right? So, well, the net force we're going to look at the horizontal, so the net force is going to be Fa minus the drag force Kv, and that's going to be equal to M dV dt. You can actually stop it here. If you want to take it one step further, that's fine. You could say Fa minus Kv over M equals dV dt. That's pretty much where you want to end it. Um, and this was a good two points. So basically, you got one point for plugging these numbers into Newton's uh, law, and then one point for this. Now, the good thing, the really good thing about these problems is that they, uh, on the C exam, they tend to give one of the parts be a set up but do not solve differential equation, which means if, again, you don't know what you're doing. Just write down a random differential. dV over dt equals kV. Or you know what? You can even write dV over dt equals fa. And then use this in all your later parts, and you will get a pretty uh, relevant answer. You'll get some partial credit for this. Um, all right. Moving on. Now it wants to know the ter determine the terminal velocity. Now you should remember this. Terminal velocity. I did mention it in class. I said this is the part where the drag force is balanced out by whatever the force that's making it move, causing it to move at a constant speed. So that means that terminal velocity means F net equals zero, which means that FA should equal KV which means that V must equal FA over K. All right, so this is important uh, mostly, and this was just one point for uh, basically the right answer. But this is important because this is going to tell you what your maximum value is. All right, and you'll see what I mean in a second. All right. Now they want us to use the differential that we had before in order to um, get an actual equation. All right, so like I said, I recommend that you write down this into your calculator, and if you're ever asked to um, use this, if not, 
you should know how to set up the differential and then you should know what the final answer is going to be. Again, put the answer in your um, calculator. Because even if you're not going to get the full, uh, even if you are unsure if you're going to get the full five points, you'll at least get a good amount of three or four points just for setting up the problem. All right. So we left off with this, dv over dt equals fa minus kv over m. Now, if you remember from before, I said, uh, I mentioned that when you do an integration like this, you have to get like terms to one side. So I need to get this uh, v over to here. Uh, but I can't just add it over, I have to actually divide it over. Now the only way I can do that is if I take this entire term over with me. The only way I could get v over as a through multiplication or division is like this. All right, so this is what I end up getting. And right there, you get one point. All right, so like I said, setting up the problem is going to be easy. It is, uh, you can get some, uh, a lot of points for that. All right, now from here, well, we know that we have to integrate kv, kva, All right. Now, and I'm not even joking, this is one point. So not only do you get a one point for realizing that um, like variables have to go on the side, you know, V has to go with DV and then everything else goes with DT, but you also get one point for realizing that you have to take an integration. Why? No idea. But hey, who's arguing about free points? All right. Now your third point comes from realizing your bounds. All right, so for t, that's easy. That's just, I'm actually going to switch this around, dt over m. For t, it's easy. It's always zero to t, always. Um, unless they give you specific times, it's pretty much always going to be uh, zero to t. Uh, for the velocity, it's going to be, well, if you look at the problem, it says, uh, let's write this, fa minus kv. All right, so it's going to start from rest. That's what it says here, initially at rest. So it starts at zero, and it ends at some time at some velocity v. Uh, this v is a variable. This is variable v, which means that that's not like a ending, an actual ending velocity. That's just whatever ending velocity we care about. Um, and again, one point for getting your bounds. So. Without doing any sort of calculus, or any real calculus, you've already gotten three of the five points for this problem. All right? Now, the rest of the problem is going to be a little bit tricky. Again, it may even be tough for those who are taking APC, which is why I recommend knowing how to set up the problem and then having the answer. That way you get the most amount of points. All right? Now you have to integrate this. Uh, this one's easy, the dt part, because mass is constant, so the mass gets pulled out, and you just have the integral of dt, which is t, and 0t, so that's basically just t over m. You know, fairly easy. This one is a little bit trickier. So, for those who don't know, because, uh, you know, haven't taught you guys extreme calculus yet, is that when you take an integral of... Um, something like this, x, uh, dx over x, the answer is going to end up being ln of x. However, if there is a, let's say there's a k in front of it, then it's going to be ln of x divided by the derivative of this bottom, which is k. Uh, this becomes important right now, because if I were to take the integral of this, or the, sorry, yeah, the integral of this, then I end up getting ln of fa minus kv, and then I have to divide it by the derivative of this, all right? So the derivative 
with respect to v, of course, of this is just negative k. Like that. So that's it. That's what, that's what I have to do, and I have to do this from uh, 0 to v. And I need to actually erase this, because I need room. Alright, so this ends up being, uh, I'm actually going to move this k over to the other side, again, to save room. So negative k over there. Alright, I just multiplied it over. Alright, so this actually is ln of fa minus kv minus ln of fa, because I'm going from 0 to f. And you should know that this com uh, we can combine those two to make it fa minus kv over fa. Alright, and then what we need to do here is we have to get rid of this ln. So as you as some of you may know, basically what you do is you raise this and this with e to the power e. This just becomes e to the negative kt over m. But this gets rid of that ln, and we're left with fa minus kv over fa, or 1 minus kv over fa. Um, move things around, kv over fa equals 1 minus e to negative kt over m. And you end up coming up with this answer. Alright, so this is your answer, and like I said, this is pretty much always going to be the answer when you have a force uh, causing something to accelerate, and then you have a drag force. This would be true if um, you had a problem like um, an object free-falling and experiencing a drag force. Uh, of course, FA in this case would be replaced with FG, and the K is just whatever, whatever constant value is in front of the V. So sometimes they actually have like BV. So instead of K, it would be replaced with V. Uh, you get one point for this, and one point for... Uh, it says attempting to solve for this. So I don't know if you'll just get some points if you get to here and then just jump ship to go to here. I don't know where that last point is, but again, without doing any real calculus, you get three points, and then just for writing the answer, you get one point. Now, the good thing is you should double check to make sure that this is, uh, it makes sense. Um, it should start at zero. If you were to graph this on your calculator, it should start at zero and then reach some um, terminal speed and the max speed should be this FA over K. All right. So this is what I meant by that whole terminal speed from the pre previous section is important because it's right here. Now, um, this tells us what the uh, terminal speed is because at some long period of time, this whole term should go to zero leaving us with uh, just FA over K. All right. Again, um, this is the big problem for this. Uh, if you're having trouble with this calculus, don't fret too much, because the multiple choice does not have calculus this tough. The calculus is only on the free response, and when it's this tough, they give a lot, a lot of partial credit. So just remember those steps. Um, just remember how to set it up, this part, and then remember this answer. That's all you need to do. Alright, now this last part, it's saying what's the uh, graph of speed as a function of time. Now, we've done this uh, in class before, so it should be fairly easy. Well, normally... For a question like this, the graph should go up like that, linearly on forever. 
but uh, we sh you should know that because there is a ter because there's a drag force, there's going to be a terminal speed. It should never go above a certain line. So instead of going up linearly, it's going to start linearly, and then it's going to curve, and then it's basically going to end at this point, the terminal speed. Um, so you get one point for um, realizing that it starts at zero. I know my graph doesn't really look like it's starting at zero, but it does. Starting at zero and basically having the slope go from positive to zero uh, without ever going negative. Um, for realizing that there's an asymptote here and realizing what that asymptote is. So, you know, that's where you get all your three points. All right. So, like I said, uh, make sure you understand this problem. Make sure that you write down that, that integration part. It's all important. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Practice the, uh, some of the easier calculus and make sure to write that into your calculator.